Perfect. There we go. Good evening, everybody. Good day, should I say, and welcome back to the channel. Um, today, I have with me, as you can see on the screen here, Joe Pometto from Con Common Sense Academy. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. Or good evening my way, but good morning to you, Chuck. Thanks for having me. No, you're more than very, very welcome. So we've got quite a few people uh, watching at the moment. Um, first of all, uh, good morning to uh, Virgo Triad is in the chat. Good morning, Virgo. Uh, oh, I better mute my phone because it's going to start going crazy. Uh, how do I do that? Try to do that by hitting that button. Uh, who else have we got? Here we got Joe Hassan, who got a, his own very, very own video tribute uh, a couple of nights ago. Uh, Sassanak. Sassanak? Isn't that a city? Uh, so look, and Beverly and Victor, Mr. Swindle, Mr. Swindle, I am so sorry I missed your uh, stream this morning. I was fast asleep, of course. Um, what else have we got here? Got a few people coming in now. Tina, oh, good morning, Tina. Good morning. Haven't seen Tina for a while. Um, Beverly stops by my show. Hi, Beverly. Hi, hi, Tina as well. Tina comes in Common Sense Academy as well. She she does a lot of commenting. She's uh, she's a good girl. And Beverly, Beverly's Beverly's fantastic. She sends um, uh, emails about the, the Moors to uh, myself and Virgo and Swindle, and um, she's very very helpful. Uh, good morning, Denise. All right, so we've got quite a few people coming in. This is cool. Hey, Chief Chief Tuttle's in there too. I don't yeah. I don't know if you if if you're familiar with Chief Tuttle, Chuck. He's a he's a big contributor on my show, though. He's a ex police chief. Oh wow, excellent. Well, I might have to uh, touch base with him then. Yeah. Um, not a brat. I'm sure you're not. That's quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Joe Hassan. Joe, have you come by my channel? I think I've seen him comment on my videos. Uh, he'll be there. He'll be there. He, yeah. he, he jumps on a lot of people's uh, channels. Uh, Crimson Leo. <laughs> That's a nice comment. That's a nice comment. Two of my favorite shows. He's hallucinating. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. David Thompson, what fettle Geordie Land UK is from Geordie Land because they talk like that in Jordan in your Newcastle, you know. Or did you know that, Joe? I what no, what's Geordie Land? <laughs> <laughs> I well, well, I man, because it's the up north, it's a uh, very far northeast England man, and they talk like that. It's very okay, new. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Now that's an accent, Chuck. That's a good one. I I, I can do quite a few accents from. That's from a good one. Uh, I can't I can't do American accents yet. Uh, here we go. Here, Jarhead, Sean. They're coming in thick and fast. Love it. This is awesome. This is awesome. What do you want? Hey, no, no. Come on, Daddy's working. Go, 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 go. go. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so there's just uh, just one thing that I need to cover off first, Joe, before we start, and that is I have started getting some Patreons. Awesome. So I am going to give a shout out to my Patreons, one of which is in the room. So I've only got uh, six at the moment, but it's cool and it's helpful. Yeah. Uh, so Andrew S, uh, Joseph D, Joseph H, we all know who that is. Mm. Uh, Kiffin, Peter S, and Tom Castro. I'm still, I'm sure Tom will be in here shortly. Oh, yeah, Tom's a regular on my channel too. Me and Tom have chatted. He's, he's awesome. Yeah. And that's how you spell Geordie. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait, are you a booger? Uh, I was talking to a British friend and he was introducing me to a lot of words and, uh, Chuff, chuffed was one of the words. Is it? We don't use chuff. Do you use chuff in Australia? I don't know. 
yeah, it's, it's an Australian, but yeah, it, that's definitely an English word. I'm, I'm so chuffed. I'm so yeah, chuffed. he said that, and I said, "What is that?" I said, "What?" <laughs> I said, "What does that mean?" I'm like, okay. Uh, um, still, Doctor. Yes, Joe. I am for a while. Um, uh, ex Mrs. Chuck is back at college because her college is reopened, so she's uh, very busy uh, going to college. Uh, I went down to pick the pick the dogs up a couple of days ago, and uh, I swear I walked into a war site in Iraq or Iran or something. The house was an absolute mess, <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and I told her so. I said, <laughs> I thought my house was messy. Jesus. She went, oh, I know. I'm just so busy. You go. <laughs> uh, women, eh? I was going to say, when you said that, Chuck, did the war zone then increase? Did it then explode? Like, <laughs> yeah, there was blood on the walls. Uh, I bet. I bet. Uh, um, oh, I missed that one. Um, bullshit. I'm calling, <laughs> I'm calling bullshit on that one. Sorry, uh, <laughs> Sorry missus, but, you know, Texans, y'all, you know, tar, Texans tar like that, y'all, I think. Lots of y'all. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Amer you know, Americans, we get you can have a New York accent, a Boston accent, a Southern uh, accent. New York, I'm walking here. Right, 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 right. <laughs> So don't bullshit me, Mrs. Oh, uh, by the way, Joe, um, there are no rules on this channel. I do not uh, like uh, bad language in the chat or disrespectful comments. Anybody seen doing disrespectful comments will be booted. Um, but my live stream, swearing, swearing goes. All right. On my, on my videos, I do, do not swear as, as little as possible. Although I did say shit on one video the other. <laughs> my first video back. And so, someone picked up on it straight away going, oh my God, Chuck's more. <laughs> no, I do the same. I try not to do it. And then I catch myself saying shit in some of them. I've probably dropped the F word a few times, but I, I try to never drop it. And so. But live, live stream, anything goes. Fair enough. I, I generally avoid that word unless I've been having a few drinks, but you never know what will happen. Yes. Okay, okay. So, a couple of comments. Uh, because, Mrs. Bloody Virgo Triad, you very rarely come in my chats, but as a special for you, you have now got a hammer. Not a hammer, a wrench. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. So, Joe, um, yes, thank you very much. Thank you for joining me. I, it's been a couple of weeks in, in the uh, in the making, but you're here, and thank you so much. What got you into the law work, and also what type of law do you do? Uh, so um, I was in I was in the Air Force, Chuck, like early two thousands, and uh, you know, this could be a long story. I'll try to keep it short. So when I was young, I used to want to go into politics. Okay. I don't know if I still want to do that. Okay. Probably not, but that's what drew me to the law. So my goal, I went into the air force. I did four years in the air force. I got out. I went, I was a political science, uh, major in at college at university. Um, my, my sister's an attorney as well, just FYI. So a little bit attorney in my family. Um, and so that was my plan. I went to the Air Force four years. I was going to be a political science major because that's, at least in the U.S., that's like the big major. And then you go to law school afterwards here. I got, I heard, I was talking to someone again from the U.K. I know it's a little different. But here it's you do, you do your undergrad four years. Then you go to law school for three years. So that's what I did. Um, when I got in, by the time I got into law school, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go into politics anymore. But good thing is um, that I really enjoy being a lawyer. Um, when I was in law school, I didn't know what type of law I wanted to go into, 
but I wanted to be in court because I just, I like interacting with people. I think I'm pretty good thinking on my toes and arguing. And, you know, you can, some types of lawyers are never in court, right? And that, you know, and then some are in all the time. So one of the best ways to get into court is to do criminal law. Um, so when I was in law school, I did some interns with the public defender's office. Office might be called something different. I know people all around the world, but public defender is just the free attorneys that the government pays for for poor people who don't have enough money to pay for an attorney. So I worked with them when I was in law school. Um, kind of interesting. When I got out, um, I did civil law for a couple of years. Uh, and then I got back into criminal law when I started my own practice. When I did civil law, I did that for three, four years um, working for other uh, uh, firms. And then I got into, when I went on my own, I started doing criminal law. That's what I've been doing the last four or five years. Um, and also when I started, I, I first encountered sovereign citizens when I was in law school working for the public defender's office. But that's kind of my story. Now I have my own practice and I love it. Um, I do a little bit of everything. So I do criminal defense, but I do personal injury, employment, seriously, almost anything. There's some specialties that I don't go into. So sort of like a general practitioner because I'm on my own. If I think I can help someone, they have a landlord tenant case, I'll take it. Okay. So it's quite. Um, so so when you when you first go to university, um, you study the law as such, and the, and then but obviously while you're there, you have to be thinking where do I want to go because there is obviously as you mentioned so many different sort of sections of of law, you, litigation, um, contracts, criminal things like that. So. Um, so you like you say you've got to be thinking and is that how you is that how you sort of process uh, progress through university by going to uh, um, you know different seminars or, or it's so um in uh well at least in the u.s your first year of law school there is every all the classes are predetermined for you for your first year okay so you don't get to pick any courses your first year you got to take one year of uh of property contracts criminal etc um i have a lot of criticisms of law school in the u.s okay I will tell you, Chuck, most people go to law school, they don't know yet what area they're going to go into. I would say that's probably true of at least in, in like my class, 60%. There's about about half the class, like their parent, they come from families that were in the law. And so they sometimes know, well, I'm going to go work for, you know, my family's firm or my dad did this, I'm going to go do this, my mom did this, etc. They might have a path, but most people sort of don't. So um, I don't, you know, I'll be honest with you, before I went to law school, I didn't really have a vision of what type of law I was going to get into. Um, I kind of thought, like early on, it was, well, I'll do anything to make some money, okay? And a lot of people, I, I mean, I could talk about law school, all day, but a, and a lot of people have that is you go, the plan is you get out, you make some money at like a big firm, and then you go and do what you want to do. So I kind of had that in the back of my mind. A after my first year, I worked for a small firm and I worked for the public defender's office. And I also actually that I also clerked for a judge. And that's how most people get a sense for what they want to do when they're in law school, I at least in the U.S., is you go and work for those types of firms or you go and work, you know, for that government organization or a judge, whatever, because you could be a law clerk your whole career working for judges. So. That's what I did, and I liked the feel at the public defender's office. The small firm, I, I wasn't feeling it. It might have just been the attorneys I was working with. I, I, I'm gonna get, getting good vibes from them. Um, and then working for the judge was fine. He did a real narrow area of law. It was like zoning regulations and then elect, election type stuff, which is interesting, but most attorneys are never involved in that. 
So um, I tried out the public defender's office, and that's when I said, well, this is me because I get to be in court. I like reading, I like re reading, writing, and researching as well, but I like the or verbal stuff and engaging with judges and other lawyers. So that's kind of when I knew I sort of wanted to go criminal. Um, but uh, that... It, that also sort of shifted when I got out of law school because it was 2007. It was, I, I, I'm sorry, it was, I got out in 2013, okay? And the economy was still, I mean, it was getting better, but jobs were pretty tough for attorneys at that time. Um, and I had trouble finding something locally. So I took the best job that I could. That's why I went and started working for a small firm. And the funny thing about that was, the firm was so small that I was practically on my own, right? Like, it's like you go with a startup business and, uh, you, you know, the guys who run the business don't necessarily have all the answers either. So I did that for about a year, year and a half, learned to do my own thing, worked for a bigger firm for about two more years. Then I went on my own and got back to criminal. Okay. Um, there's one question I want to ask you about working in law firm, but I have got my very first super chat. Oh, I'm awesome. <laughs> I, I, I was going to mention that super chat is on. Um, I was watching Mike the Cop the other day, um, in fact, last night, and he was, <laughs> my God, he was sitting there. Um, he got banned for uh, promoting his company, which is... Um, uh, CB, it's uh, CBD, the cannabis oil type thing. He does, yeah. It doesn't contain THC, which is right. Great. And um, he came back on explaining why, because he got suspended for a week. And um, people were sending him fifty dollars at a time. I think he got four fifty dollars, a twenty-five dollars, a fifteen dollars. I was like, wow. <laughs> I'm turning super chats on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one of the nice things. Congrats on getting monetized, by the way. Oh, um, it, yeah, that's good, one I, of the nice things about it. I've never yeah. gotten a fifty dollar one. <laughs> no, I, I've I've got my first super chat, and it, of course, it's from Virgo. Virgo, thank you, my darling. You are awesome. You are awesome, and you know that we all watch your channel. Uh, I don't think there is a single person in this chat that doesn't watch Virgo Triad. She is so knowledgeable. She does her research, and it's like she says, she doesn't post the video unless she can back it up. So awesome. So I, I think it's a, this is a waste of breath, but anybody that hasn't subscribed to Virgo Triad, go do it. But I think everybody is. Absolutely. Um, so, working in a law firm, tell me, I need to know the truth. Okay. Is it anything like Suits? <laughs> so, I've only watched, I've watched Suits a handful of times. Um, no, I wouldn't say it is. I wouldn't say it is. I would, have you watched, uh, people are like, uh, have you watched Better Call Saul? It's, I've actually, it's on Stan and I went into Stan this week and found it and I've put it on my watch list. Um, I'm currently watching something called Treadstone at the moment, which is a Jason Bourne spinoff. Okay. Uh, it's a little bit deep, but uh, no, uh, I haven't watched it yet, but carry on. Chuck, you got another good, nice oh, super I, chat from get, Victor. Get out of town. I wonder where Victor's from. I could do his accent. Get out of town. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Victor. I like your cat, too, by the way. <laughs> He's got oh, the cat. Quite, that is quite a cute cat. That's not bad. I'm, I'm, I'm not really a cat person, but I mean, having two very big dogs, it's uh, it's all good. Anyway, uh, anyway carry on. Uh, better call Saul. Yeah, so Suits, um, th there was that show with William Shatner, too. Ah. Oh, Boston Legal. Boston legal. Okay. Oh, don't get me started on that. <laughs> <laughs> the, look, those, I mean, that's what law firms may be like in New York city. 
okay, or like certain high powered cities. And I'm not saying there may be like there's there's some big we have like some global law firms here in Pittsburgh and like some big law firms. But I, like the practice of law in Pittsburgh is more like. I, get, I mean, I, I know this sounds hilarious if you see Better Call Saul, but it's actually my favorite attorney show because it's realistic and like it captures and in that show, he's actually a public defender and he gets court appointed cases and he's like this solo attorney working out of an office in the back of a nail salon. Like I know guys like that. Like my fr my first office was just... A, 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 an office that another attorney had that he gave to me in exchange for work, right? So I really, I like Better Call Saul. There's also a bigger firm in that show that's, uh, that is sort of like, I would say more realistic than what you see in Suits. Here's the funny thing about Suits though, Chuck, and this is good, this is on topic here, is there's so uh when i first started practicing law there was this guy who was hanging around the legal community in pittsburgh and he'd be in court and he'd go and he'd chat with judges and he was wearing a suit and everything and everybody thought he was an attorney okay and it turned out that he wasn't like he ended up i believe he ended up getting a job at a law firm and then and then the law firm looked into him after he was hired. Don't quote me on these facts, but I, I could post the article later. Everybody get the actual facts. And after that, he was hired. They found out that he wasn't an attorney. He was posing as an attorney. Um, and that happens if you Google that. I mean, we have sovereign citizens, of course. They're posing as attorneys. Um, but if if you Google it, you'll see. I'm sure it happens in in other countries as well. But you'll see it happening in the United. States, like at any given time, Google it. You're like, oh, so and so was arrested in New York City for pretending to be an a, an attorney. Excuse me, and because honest, like the that's a weird thing about the job is when I first started practicing. Like if you put a suit on and you walk into a courtroom, people just assume you're a lawyer. <laughs> yeah, if, if if you can walk the walk and talk the talk and act sort of professional and and. Yeah, I, I, I guess I reckon I could probably do it at some point. Right. So that's why Suits is not actually that out of the realm of possibility because somebody who didn't go to law school could have the knowledge or the ability and, and a lot of the skills that you need, actually, you don't even learn in law school. I mean, if you're a good negotiator, if you can, if you're a good speaker, um, if, you know, a bunch of skills that won't come from law school. Um, so yeah, that's my quote, but if people want to, I would say, I, I, I know it sounds hilarious, like watch better call Saul. And in that show, I think it's the first season early on, he does a trial as a public defender and the, the, the show starts where he's giving the closing argument, right? So it's the end of the trial and he's making his final plea to the jury and Saul, the main character, his name's Jimmy, some Jimmy McGill in this, in early on and he makes this impassioned plea to the jury where he said he, he lists all these reasons why his client do what didn't do what he's accused of and he didn't walk in there and that wasn't him and they don't have and, da, 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 da. and then the prosecutor gets up there to respond and the prosecutor just rolls a tv in front of the jury and hits play and there's videotape of the client like robbing okay this store and it's clearly the same person that's sitting over there and that's uh, the thing some of my cases are like that it's like we have no chance sometimes um that was going to be one of my next questions when you're defending somebody um which i i take my hat off and, and say kudos to you to, for doing that. But when they're guilty, when their fingerprints are quite literally on a smoking gun, when they are captured on CCTV, when they, uh, their DNA is all over the scene, how, <laughs> from, from an ex-policeman's point of view, how can you 
How can you defend those people? <laughs> what, 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 what's the aim? Is it to, to sort of reduce the sentence? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, you're exactly right. Um, you know, 90, uh, I think there's statistics, uh, you know, you, different for federal court or state court, but you can't hear me. No, look, look at the screen. Oh, 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 oh okay, okay. Before Whoa. we jump, before, all right, everybody. Um, before uh, I answer that question about how I defend the guilty people, um, we're going to do allegedly a, guilty. the what allegedly, allegedly guilty. Absolutely. Absolutely. The innocent until proven guilty. Um, you're going to raise your cup in the air. I know normally I do diet Coke. I today have diet root beer. I got from my dad's house, um, or coffee, which to me is the, the nectar of the gods. You may have a beer, you may have a wine, you may have a vodka. If you're Tom Castro, you got a Raiders cup, okay? Raise your glass in the air. <laughs> it, it tastes better when we sip together. Cheers. Cheers to Chuck. Thank you. I totally forgot about that. It's, it's written down on my pad as well. Don't forget the sip. It came in and then out. It kept coming in and out. Tina got us. Thank you, Tina. So, um, yeah, 95% for, of the cases, Chuck, we're going to, uh, you know, we, I, we settle them. Another super chat bullet. Thank you. Um, oh, look. Have a cafe on me. Thank you, bullet. Have Great job. Awesome yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, 95% of the cases, if my client's guilty is sin, then my goal is usually to just walk them through the process. And like you said, Chuck, work out a deal and try to get them a better sentence. Um, sometimes there's things we can do, you know, look in a homicide case, there's nothing you can do, right? So if my client, and I actually haven't done a homicide trial, I've done attempted homicides, but like in a homicide, for example, there's nothing you can do. Um, you're, if, the, if the prosecution is intent on bringing that charge against your client, then you're just going to go to trial and you're going to pull out every stop that you can. Now, you may only have so many tricks in the bag, okay? And if that's the case, you know, you're going to lose, but you never know what's going to happen at trial. Okay, so our job, my job as a defense attorney is to zealously advocate. That's what the Supreme Court of the United States says. So whether we know, I know the client's guilty or innocent, I zealously advocate. Okay, yeah, a murder case, there's nothing you can do. But most cases, for example, <laughs> this live stream has got way better. It got way better. Um but most cases, I can do things to mitigate the sentence if they're going to plead guilty. So they might do rehab or take classes or stay out of trouble beforehand. I've settled cases, Chuck. I don't know if you've seen this as a police officer, but I had one case where um, on the day of trial, there was a victim. It was a guy got punched in the face. Okay, On the day of trial... The, the other, the district, the prosecutor comes up to me and she goes, you know, all my client, all my, all the victim really wants is an apology. And I look over at my client and I go, you, if you, if you apologize to him, you can pay a fine and get like a very minor offense, like a citation. And he's like, oh yeah, yeah. He's like, I'll do it. I'll do it. And these two guys, they get up and the judge is there and we're ready to have this trial. And they get up and he says, look, man, I'm sorry about what happened. I thought, you know, da, 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 da. And like they started hugging and the judge was like, he's like, that's the first time I've seen this. He goes, that's the first time I've seen them hug. And uh, and then my client, like he got like a, a citation, a dis, like a summary disorderly conduct, which is very low level. And we settled the case like that. So, yeah, most of the time. But yeah, if they're guilty is sin, sometimes you just go through the motions and you try to do a mitigation on the sentence. OK. Um, cause I, I watched, um, I watch a lot of court cases on, on, uh, YouTube and the, the videos and, uh, I think one of the most disturbing facts for me is when the, 
uh, family do their family impact statements. Um, and all of this emotion comes out and, you know, and the, the judges obviously probably taking into account that all right, the chap may have pled guilty to whatever, um, but I suppose predominantly murder. And he's looking at the guy and he's, you know, he's admitted what he's done, but then you got the family who are going, oh, you, you know, you, you've ruined our lives. We're not going to have grandchildren. We're not going to have this. We're not going to have that. Um, there's been a couple of cases I've seen where, although he's pled guilty, possibly to avoid uh, any sort of death sentence that some of the states still have, they they sit there and smirk and and smile and I can't even begin to comprehend how a judge would go. You you've got to die. You've got to die. <laughs> Well, obviously, because he's pled guilty, I think, isn't that sort of one of the, the things that takes the death sentence off the off the table if, if there is a guilty plea? Usually, yeah. Yep. Yep. It's... But holy moly, will you stop? <laughs> oh, my stars. Stop it. Good grief. That was very nice. Thank you, Virgo. Oh, jeez. I'm gonna have to. Do I have to split split my profits with you? You have to buy me a coffee. Oh, okay. Okay. You do gotta buy me a coffee. <laughs> All right. I'll put my I'll, I'll put my hands up to that one. I'll, um, okay. Okay. I, I also don't know if you if you know that um, I was supposed to be coming to America mm. uh, in October. Uh, I was landing in Boston. Where's my hand? Landing in Boston. Going to New York going to Philadelphia and then going down to Washington. But of course that's all, oh, this is getting ridiculous now. <laughs> this is getting stupid. So um, now let me just do a quick search here. I know you're, do you mind me saying where you're from? Cause yeah, no, no, it's fine. I say in the videos, I'm, yeah. You're in Pittsburgh, aren't you? Pittsburgh, correct. Um, okay, so let's just have a quick look here. Oh man, uh, let me just do this very quickly. So, uh, I la well, I was due to land in Boston, go to New York, go to Philadelphia, and then go down to Washington. Now you're over there. So, how long would it take to get from there to there? Uh, it, it's about four to five hours, Chuck. Ooh. Yeah. Listen, Ooh. if you if you come, let me know. Maybe I'll come to you. Well, is there, there's got to be, there's got to be a middle ground. There's got to be a what? I'm sorry. A, a mid, there's got to be a middle ground, surely. What, what, what's Harrisburg? That's actually the capital of Pennsylvania. Um, but. Oh, really? Yeah, but there's not much to see there. <laughs> it's a neat, it's a neat little town. Um, I, I thought Pit, I thought I actually generally thought Pittsburgh was the capital of. That's yeah. Don't, don't worry about it. Most people think that Pittsburgh is very I, 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 close. I thought, I thought Philadelphia was the capital of, of Pennsylvania. No, no. Wow. No. Harris Harrisburg, Harrisburg, Harrisburg. Hasn't that got something to do with the Civil War? Oh, no, that's Gettysburg. Oh. Yeah, and yeah, and Gettysburg I, is I, not far from Harrisburg. I, I, I knew I had a burg in it somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so if if I ever, or eventually when I do my tour, uh, the reason for my tour was uh, in October is it's when I'm 50, and that was going to be my treat to myself. But um, our, our current global situation has put a massive stop to that. Absolutely. H have you been to the U.S. before, Chuck? Uh, I've been to Florida. Okay. Um, been to, uh, uh, where is it? Oh, here. 
Orlando. Yeah, did, did the Disney thing. Nice, nice. And then we spent a week in. This is my my long oh god longer long time ago a partner. Uh, we spent a week in Orlando, and then we flew to Cancun. And had oh. a week. oh, that was good. <laughs> that was good. Trust me. <laughs> I've been to Cancun. I've been there once. Um, I would say seriously though, if you come, because I like all those cities you're going to, I like visiting them. Um, I have friends in Philadelphia. I don't have any friends in DC, but I like going to DC and I, my sister lived in New York city for like eight or nine years. I used to go to New York city all the time. Um, so I might be happy to come out and meet you. Um, yeah, Pittsburgh can be out of the way there. I mean, there is like a train, um, but that's still a solid for it, it's, you know, it's quicker to drive. Um, so if you come, maybe we could work something out. I'd, I'd rather meet you. Look, uh oh, uh oh, <laughs> we got our, <laughs> but I would rather meet you honestly in Philly or in New York or DC than in Harrisburg. Okay. Or you come to Pittsburgh. There's more to do. Like Pittsburgh's not as cool as those cities. Like I just, I love Pittsburgh, but those cities are huge. They have history. There's all kinds of things they're known for. Um, so I would say, you know, we could meet out there somewhere. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, look, I'm, I'm down for that. I, I, I love America. Uh, and it, it, there are no, um, Yes, I, it's hard. I'm, I'm seriously engaging with Joe here, and it's it's really hard to keep up. Um, so uh, it, it's absolutely no, um, it's, it's no secret that I, I love America. Um, ever since Cagney and Lacey, um, I was about that high when I started watching Cagney and Lacey and, and I fell in love with New York immediately. All of the pictures in in my lounge um, are out of New York and, and, and that's the that was the biggest thing for me. And and that's why when I was fifty I thought, fuck it, I'm going to New York. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. New York is awesome. I mean, I've been to New York City I don't even know how many times. I mean I, I always have a great time. Just the food and, you know, so much to do. This DC is boring. The, I've got a... Oh, I don't know where my list is. I got, a list, I got such a list of things to do in DC. <laughs> <laughs> I've got... Where is it? I must do my own book. Oh, no. Because people said... Because originally I was just going to go to New York for three weeks. And right. people said, well, it's, yeah, it's a bit bit too much. You'll, you'll see the shit, but you'll get bored. So that's when I decided to split it up. And then somebody said to me, um, you've got to go to D.C. Uh, the, the museums, the Holocaust Museum. Um, in fact, I think everything was a museum. But yeah. <laughs> apparently D.C. is just so much better. Victor, will you seriously stop it, man? <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, goodness sake. This is crazy. This That's is crazy. awesome. Man. Thank you, Victor. Thank you. I Listen, I'm a fan of DC because of the, the history. Okay, you can go... Like you can tour the government buildings and things like that, mm -hmm. and they're just walking around. Plus, plus, there's a great food. It's a great food scene, so you can get great food. Tour the government buildings, see the monuments, see the museums. Uh, a couple of days there is great. That, that's my opinion. Some people, you know have a negative opinion of dc that's actually fairly common and like yeah some of the outlying neighborhoods are pretty bad but like you know you're, you're not going to go to those neighborhoods without a reason so yeah um i um at the moment i still haven't canceled um my uh, ambience mm. just uh, just in case um 
I've got till sort of September to cancel them, and I, I really don't want to, but I don't think we're going to be allowed to leave um, leave the country um, by October. So uh, it's I, I'm so upset because I I mean I will go, I will go, but I just uh, maybe next year, you know, maybe uh, by next year. Yeah, it's just, just going to be a very a very quiet, subdued fiftieth. Absolutely. Absolutely. Me and the dogs. What kind right. of dogs do you have, Chuck? Okay, so I have, um, my dog is Charlotte. She is a pedigree uh, chocolate lab. Okay, nice. And um, our dog, me and Mrs. X Chuck, we have a, a Labradoodle, um, Charlie. Um, but he's, he, he's he, there's, there's no doodle in him. He's... <laughs> He's sort of ninety five percent lab. Gotcha. Um, but he, he he does shed. Oh my god, does he shed? <laughs> oh, oh. I, mean, I love having him. He's a great boy. He's he's eleven oh, eleven and two months. Um, so he, you know he's not got long left. But mm. oh, the amount of housework I have to do when he visits. Oh my god. My sister, so I, I don't have any pets, but um, my sister has a chocolate lab, and uh, I love him to death. Um, he's got a lot. He's got a lot of energy, but he's a heck of a dog. So I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of labs in general. Oh, I, I, I think predominantly throughout my life, I've, I've, I've had labs. Um, once, once, oh, when I was very, very, very young. So this is back in the 1600s. Um, we had a, a bit of a bit of a mix. A dog called Rex. He was oh, he was awesome. He was sort of part shepherd, part. Uh, actually, I don't know what he was. He, he was a bit of a mongrel, but mm. oh, he mm. so attentive and so intelligent. Yeah, labs are they're, uh, they're good with kids. They're good with people. I, I'm just I'm always a, I'm always a big fan of them. Um, I like golden retrievers too. But uh, yeah, big fan of labs overall. You're good, Tom. Yeah. Yes, uh, Arlington is definitely was definitely on the list. Um, what else was I doing in DC? Oh, I was. <laughs> I was going to go and find all of the Illuminati places. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, Chuck, if you do that, I'm coming with you. I, that's where I will meet you. Oh, I was going to photograph everything and put it in a montage and find the find the third eye and find the thirty three degrees and the and the thirty three steps and the. Oh God! What That's where I will meet you. If you do oh, that, a, I will meet you to do that. What a conspiracy! <laughs> <laughs> Did you? I don't. So I I follow. I actually get a decent amount of my content from this. The Reddit page. It's called "Am I Being Detained?" I've Ooh. I've I've uh, I've noted it a couple of times on my show. I'm sure some of the viewers are aware of it. But they posted. They posted today this montage of individuals. I guess they're from the UK, and they cite. They go through. They start out by declaring their sovereignty. That's like their first line. I declare my sovereignty, and then they go into like the Illuminati, uh, the COVID nineteen uh, hoax. Like, it's a two-minute spiel. They're all, like, reading the same card. And basically, in that two minutes, they cite every conspiracy theory that you can think of. Not every single one of them, but most of them, including uh, the Illuminati, Sovereign Citizen, COVID-19 hoax. I mean, I was just dying. But um, anybody, check that Reddit page. I can't rem I don't know the exact uh, link, but it's called Am I Being Detained is one word. It's so funny. All right, I did actually um, sign up to Reddit this week while I was off, um, just looking for content, and um, there is some crazy shit out there. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. 
Oh, you could get was... buried in Reddit, but it's uh, like it, it has some really good stuff. There's a Moorish, there's a more page. It's called the Moops, and then there's Am I Being Detained is like the best. There's a lot of like for real sovereign citizen groups, you know, where they're teaching the sovereign citizen stuff. But Am I Being Detained is like the people who you know, like us, who clown on them more or less. And um, it's just great. It's great. Constant content. So I'll ask you this, Joe, as an avid um, Sovset follower, um, like we all are, do you think, and uh, as a lawyer, do you think that it will ever stop? Do you think that one day one Sovtard is going to cop, cop it big time and then people would go, oh, <laughs> shit, maybe, maybe this isn't real. <laughs> I don't know, Chuck. I ought to, right now I would have to say no because I think it's, I think it's growing. And I just, I think too, just in my lifetime, right? Like prior to the internet, like there were, I mean, number one, like prior, you know, I didn't really get online until like my mid twenties. Okay. And, you know, I remember growing up, there were a couple weird things that we would know or hear about, like conspiracy theories. You know, there's the famous one, JFK. I had no idea what a sovereign citizen was or whatever. And I see it growing. I think the internet and social media has just propagated it. And it, it's been around before that. I, I mean, to say that there will be a day where it's been completely dropped, I don't, I don't know, Chuck. I don't think so. Not anytime soon. Maybe, no. maybe. It's just too, it's just, there's always people. So, you know, I, I'm writing, I'm writing a book. I actually have it pretty much done. I'm sorry, I need to ask you about that, your book. That's please. okay. That's okay. So I'm writing a book and well, again, we share a lot. So, but, uh, oh, barbecue Bob's on here. Hey, Bob. Um, but, you know, I talk about in a the book, there's like certain types of sovereign citizens, right? There's the people who truly believe. And then I think there's people who get into it just to scheme other people. And then I think there's people who like, because I have some of these are, you know, I run into these people in my job. It's people who have just had their license suspended. Like, I don't know how it works in Australia or the UK. It's like, but in the U.S., you can literally just stack your license suspensions forever. So I, there's people who will never get a driver's license. Okay, maybe, but almost never. Victor, thanks again. Okay, so these people, they reach for whatever they can. Like these people have been involved in the sovereign citizen ideology is so strong to like give them something to stand on. I just like I think somebody there will always be somewhere out there who will reach out and use it, and and, it, and it's so easy to find on the internet. And, and so I, you know my my argument is I think it's growing. It's growing internationally. Um, yeah, we we're, we're gonna. Uh, I'm seeing a lot more over uh, over here in Australia. Um, and it. it <sighs> Or it's just so scary because it's not real. <laughs> it's, just, it's just not real. I mean, the classic case, and I, I've studied this. Um, oh, we, I will, woman. I really <laughs> tell you what to do. Stop it. Jeez. Oh, for goodness sake. Um, Thompson versus Smith is a classic. Um, from memory, it's where it talks about um, they talk about the the fourteenth, no, tenth amendment. Uh -huh. the, tenth, yep. the tenth amendment states that. Oh God, here we go. I'm testing myself now. What the federal government can't do, it basically hands back to the states, the individual state, to say, "This is your state. You." control it as you will and that state imposes if you want to drive on the roads 
you've got to get a license. You have to register your vehicle. You have to be insured. So it's there. It, it, it's there in your fucking Tenth Amendment. Is the <laughs> Uh, fuck your First Amendment and your Fourth and your Fifth and your Sixth and whatever, but the Tenth Amendment states that the, the states have the power to run their own state, and it's there in Thompson Thompson v Smith. But of course, what the what the soft hearts do is they love to cherry pick. Yep. Um, Thompson versus Smith. I think the first three paragraphs. Go da, da 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 da, which could be slightly, you know, misread. But then the fourth paragraph, which the subtards don't like to read, goes boom. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And and uh, that that's almost a problem for the courts. I mean, it's not a problem, but it, it almost is. And like, hey Gary, how you doing? Um, but uh like so when when uh the, the 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 republicans the states were challenging i'm to use this as an example we're challenging obamacare in the uh <laughs> we're getting way better we're getting way better uh when they challenged obamacare and justice kennedy wrote the opinion like a lot of people read the opinion like he was going to uh strike it down and then, and then they said that the language was changed so that he could uphold it. Actually, it was Justice Roberts, right? So, yeah, so you could probably read, like you said, on that opinion, you could read a portion of that of opinion and think that the decision went another way. Right. But you read the rest of it. And you see, oh, no, it didn't. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. And actually, the crazy thing about case law and legal opinions is the, there's only generally one or two sentences in there that actually become the law. Like it's only like what the exact holding is. And the so the sovereigns, they pick, they cherry pick it, they cherry pick it. And they take these cases, the fun, the right, like the right to travel. And I go into this in the book, the right to travel. No. It's the same thing. There's two or three paragraphs talking about how there's like this right to travel. And then the last paragraph, there's right to travel. And then the last paragraph says, but the state has the power to regulate it reasonably. Well, they ignore that, but they, so they're always going to be able to go into these writings and pick out nonsense if in order to support their ideas. Um, so I just, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going anywhere. I think the internet's propagating it. Honestly, I was like, I, and I think the uh, COVID-19 is feeding it because now we're, I'm seeing the, the cross uh, over of the people who believe that the coronavirus is a hoax with the people who believe sovereign citizenship right they're all melting together like that video again this this go to this reddit page am i being detained it's like they're pushing it all together and i think it's making it stronger so i i don't know chuck maybe maybe one day the other thing too you know the united states is always at a strong anti-federal government bent to it you know i can't speak to other countries but here and that probably goes back to the civil war because the civil war was about states rights and the union won and they put this federal government on the losers and so you know the southern states and some western states you know, always want to go to the state's rights, da, 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 anti-federal government, anti-federal government. And the sovereign citizen ideology, like, feeds the anti-federal government, you know, sort of fever that we more or less have in this country. I mean, I'm kind of, I, I consider myself, like, I, I'm sort of anti-federal government, but in a common sense way, like in a libertarian way, I'm, I don't think, I believe that the federal government should exist and have most of the powers that it does, but, uh, you know, you want to maybe reduce uh, its influence as much as possible, but I don't think it should be overthrown or it doesn't have a, a legitimacy. But surely as, as you have so many states like, exclude 
um, Hawaii, of course. You got forty nine states. Surely, some body, i.e., the federal government, has to, you know, just watch over them and just go because you could have. Um, I don't know. Where's my map again? Um, Absolutely, I, I agree, a hundred percent. You could have. Uh, let's have a look. Um, I'll, I'll pick on Nebraska, um, basically because that's where Penny's from. But that's, that's a whole other issue. <laughs> that's another. That's another thing. <laughs> but Nebraska could go. Um, okay, um, I don't know. Something radical. Um, uh, everybody, everybody can own fifteen guns. They can um, all have a million dollars each. <laughs> so if if one state goes a little bit crazy, then isn't that where the federal government sort of comes and goes? Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, 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 uh. no, 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 no! You can't do that. You you can't do that. <laughs> so, I don't know, but isn't that what the the idea of the federal government is? Absolutely, that's that's exactly what it is. And 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 again, I, I I agree with the you know the existence and most of the constitutional interpretations of the powers of the federal government. I mean, absolutely. And that was you know the problem with the United States from the beginning. I I I can already tell you're pretty knowledgeable about u.s history but after the revolution the united states first this goes this is a sovereign theory too this is also one of the, their theories after the revolution the united states had the articles of confederation first where the 13 states were very loosely aligned however they were putting up trade barriers between the other states they were getting into minor disputes mostly economic was causing you know uh the economy to essentially be damaged because there was no overwhelming federal presence right we operate in this country operated under that system for 10 years where the states essentially did have all the power and and it didn't work and so the constitution that we have now and all the powers that the supreme court and the federal government has now was was you know they came up with that because giving the states all the power didn't work um so yeah i agree with you absolutely i mean that's why the federal government exists to to, to rein it in if it gets too crazy yeah uh, i just want to clarify something what what i was people think that I've, people think that i think there's only 49 cents i know there's 50. what i was saying is because hawaii is in the middle of the the bloody ocean i was just talking about the like actual hard land America. <laughs> just sure, to, just sure. To just, just to clarify, I'm, I'm pointing at my map here, going, I, I know there are fifty states. I know there are fifty states. Um, I got which, you, Chuck. I got which, you. Which is something really funny because when I was in school, um, I don't know. I've got this vivid, vivid memory of being taught that, that there were fifty-two states. I don't, I, I don't know where it comes from. I just, I was very shocked to learn, like about 20, 20 years ago, that there are actually 50 states. I was always taught there were 52. So I don't, I don't know if someone was um, expecting, uh, what, what's, the, what's the other one that wants to go? Uh, Puerto Rico, is it Puerto Rico wants to become a state? Yeah, there's been talk about it. Yeah, in movements, etc. That's I think maybe you get that because we like because you think of the continental U.S. plus two, right? Because you have Alaska and Hawaii, yeah. and so you might it might have just gone into your mind like, oh, there's fifty, oh, but there's two more. There's, there's, there's that one and there's that one. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Oh jeez. Oh wow. This is awesome. This is awesome. Um, Joe, is there anything you would like to ask me? Absolutely. So let me ask you, Chuck, what inspired you to start your channel? 
because I, I I like your channel. It's funny. It's it's witty, and you come from a similar perspective to me, kind of uh, debunking a lot of um, nonsense. So I'm just curious, what prompted you to start a YouTube channel? Uh, just before we do that, this 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 guy's been um, gang stalking me for a, a couple of couple of months now. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a very he's a very funny guy thank you john i seriously appreciate this i am definitely gonna have to meet up with joe and take him out for a couple of coffees <laughs> that'll work too that'll work too uh, damn straight it's all joe's fault um okay so i have been on YouTube, yeah, for for a few years, like we all do, you know, you go on YouTube and you look at this and you look at that, and you see what pops up, your recommendations, things, things like that. Um, I discovered Sovereign Citizens about would have been about three years ago now, and um, I remember watching my first video. I can't remember who it was. Wouldn't surprise me if it was Van the Man. Yeah, yeah, and um, I, I just remember looking at. Look at my screen because I was still up. No, I'd left the police out. But I remember looking at my screen going, What? <laughs> what? You don't need a li of course you need a fucking license. <laughs> what? Sure. Uh, it, it, it blew my mind. So I watched a lot more, a lot more, a lot more. Um, and at the same time, I was sort of getting into the flat earth thing. Um, oh, the earth is flat. I just remember looking at the screen and going, <laughs> I know it's crazy. What? It's crazy. We've been to the moon and we've sent <laughs> pictures back, and it's it looks like so. I thought. Oh my god! I, I wish I could say something about this. Right. Um, sure. It wasn't until uh, I watched uh, a channel called Simon Dan, and I, I don't know if you, I don't know if you, you know Simon Dan, um, but he, he he's very clever, very intelligent. Um, he was a teacher. He's now a complete full time YouTuber. Um, why wouldn't you be with like three hundred and twenty thousand subscribers? Absolutely. Um, but he was in his spare room, obviously, with his video camera, with his bookshelves behind him, and he was he was saying the stuff and and doing the sort of stuff that I would say, and I'm like, do you know what? I think I could do that. I I can do that. <laughs> and um, so I did it. And, and of course, uh, my first attraction as ever was um, was Devon. Mm. Yeah. Um, he, he was my first video. Um, I, I, I did as much research as I could on him. Couldn't really find anything tangible. There was nothing that... Um, you know, the, 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 the sort of no Wikipedia page on him. Right. Type. But I thought, no, I'm, I'm going to break this guy down. I'm going to, I'm going to, and, and that was it. Got into that. And then I hit on Virgo and, and Sharon and, and it just, it just snowballed. And I was getting a few, a few subscriptions. I was getting a few likes. Um, Ash, I, I don't know if Ash is in here. I don't think he is. He was my first. Um, bu, 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 bu. Is Ash awake? Is Ash awake? I should. So Ash was my first subscriber, and he gave me uh, my light here that illuminates me. And he encouraged me. He went, "No, I've seen that first video. You, you can do this. That's awesome." And, and I, you know, I've changed things up a little bit. I've painted the room, um, I've got new background scenery, I've got a green screen, so green screen is coming soon, people, not this nice. week, obviously, but next week, 
there's going to be some green screen stuff um and uh it just snowballed i i, I forced uh ex ex mrs chuck i said you've got to subscribe to me and she went, no, <laughs> Part of the divorce deal, you've got to subscribe to me. <laughs> and she's told a couple of people. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just genuinely think I, you know, I, I, I've got a bit of a sense of humor. Um, coming from a police background, you've got to have a sense of humor, um, or else you can't cope with some stuff. I'm sure, I'm sure. And um, it just snowballed. Um, I struggled to get to. Uh, I really struggled to get to 100, I think it was. And then I hit 300. Uh, and then it's really slowed down, about 500. Mm. But then there are certain people whose names I won't mention. Van the Man, Degeneration Nation, Virgo Triad, um, Goober, <laughs> Mr. Swindle. Um, they started, like, um, not advertising, what do you... Uh, like Promoting. Promoting promoting the videos and next thing you know boom it just went crazy it just went crazy. but i love what i do i love watching the videos i love chopping them up and breaking them down and throwing in the humor um it's it's uh, very therapeutic sure it's very therapeutic so that's that's my story that's how i got into it how did you get into it it kind of well the funny thing with my is i i didn't intend to do sovereign citizens and um i so i made my show i made my show i said well i'm just going to promote my law firm and i'm going to come on and i'm going to talk about the law etc cetera, etc cetera. and um i was doing that and i wasn't getting very many views it was just friends and family etc cetera, etc cetera. And then I did a video on sovereign citizens and I'll act. So, so I did this video on sovereign citizens. You could, if anybody wants to look, it's my first video. You got to go back about a year. Um, and it's, I think it was titled like, here's why the sovereign citizen argument doesn't work. And I thought it would just be a one off topic. And again, the reason I wanted to comment on it is because I had seen them in my work. I've seen them in the court. I dealt with them when I was with the public defender's office. So I had a little bit of knowledge of them. And um, I made that video and I got about a thousand hits in a day. And I said, "What? why did I get these hits? And um, someone had actually, Devin challenged Chuck to, did he really? No, <laughs> no that, that's actually the other way around. That I. Uh, I did a video on Devon, and I, <laughs> I said to him, I said, Devon, October, I am coming to New York, you and me, boxing ring. <laughs> and I, he went, oh, no, that was it. He said to me, um, I, want, I want to do it right now. Oh, I can't do his accent. I want to do it now. I want to no, because you pay for, you pay for a, a a ticket to Australia. I'll come to Australia and I'll box you right now. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's going to happen. <laughs> um, uh, I didn't know that. That's for you to come to Australia and go back again, just so I can put you flat on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, we. It would be worth it. I thought, no, that's, that's like $2,000. I'm not doing it. Yeah, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. <laughs> I just, I got into, a lot, everybody's, you know, thrown um, him my way too. And I've watched some of his videos. I haven't talked about him much on my show. But I watched the one where some where the police came to his house. over. Oh, his the, oh the FBI. Yeah, and he was like, Real, like, uh, like, no, like, dude. <laughs> yeah, it was, um, it was a video you know, he put up. Um, he, he didn't actually say he was going to go to the uh, YouTube headquarters and bomb them. He said it'd be really funny or be really good if somebody went to the FBI headquarters and bombed them. Right, right. Literally two days later. FBI tapping on his door and he's going, 
And he, he wouldn't answer the door. Yeah, I remember, yeah. Didn't he go out on the balcony and talk to them from the balcony? And I'm like, oh my God, like, yeah, I don't think he wants to box you, Chuck. I think he's on the, uh, yeah, in my language, the second floor. So he's on, he's on the second floor and he's looking over the balcony. Yeah. He's got his phone out and he's going, blah, blah, blah. He's going, well, YouTube has said you're going to bomb them. And he's like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> And now you're putting this on YouTube. Yeah, it gets, it just, it just, it, it keeps getting better. But, um, yeah, that's, that's what happened to me. I mean, I meant to, my channel was, if you look at my early episodes, I was just talking about the law and then the sovereign citizen thing just sort of took off. And just like you, I went on a couple of, uh, kind of like uh nick rakita like i've gone on a couple of different channels even sort of outside of our little universe you know we kind of have like a little universe here and like your you know degeneration nation and you and virgo and van all get suggested to me now right and uh like early on i was going on like i've been on more fugal news like i've done a couple of things and that all sort of boosted up my membership as well got me over a thousand etc um but i got into the saw of sits because i made that one video and then i kept making them and i just got so many hits on them so i've just i've just sort of run away with it and i've got a decent number of subscribers now and i don't know if you've seen this chuck i think in because your videos are, are nicely produced um, and again, you got a great personality. I think that's a big part of it. That's the biggest part of it, really. Um, you'll just, you should like, once YouTube starts suggesting you, like, I just get subscribers now, like every day or every week. And like, when you get over 1500, you'll start to see that. But if, if, you know, you get a little bit further and you'll start to see it more and more. So, um, yeah, you say that I, I hit 1500 on friday and i i'm a bit i'm actually a really bit sad at this that um i know that people love to see soft sets and they love to see the moors but what people really love is uh windows getting smashed i know i know <laughs> um so i'm i'm currently sitting at 1576 and I, I honestly, from the first 20 subscribers I got, I was amazed and I got to 50. I'm now <laughs> at 1576. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. I, I did a video um, on Friday, I think it was. Wasn't it? But, 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 yeah. Uh, and it's six videos of window smashing. Yeah. And it's only got. 738 views um i was a bit i was a bit shocked by that because I, I thought that's what my sort of audience wanted to see um actually i might just if you don't mind i'm just going to play a little bit of this sure throw it up <laughs> everybody loves breaking glass I know, I know. Oh, um, to the person that did my intro, uh, yeah. I've got me need to do an up update and an outro. The, the person who actually did my intro is watching this. And um, don't forget, we need to do an outro. All right, never mind that. The live stream was kind of a Never, shut up, Chuck. I watched it. I watched some of this. Sorry. Really? Hang on. Okay, so for some reason she changed her mind. She wanted to interact, but then she didn't. I love the guy in the truck. Keep your eye on the probation. Also, He's getting a free show. Yeah, right? You know? This is Cops Live. Boom! Boom! I, lo I love that. You did not do that. Uh, yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Oh, he did. Um, oh, the, 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 the cop with the DUI was a bit sad. Um, luckily, I've, I've never been in that position, but... 
Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen this one. Yeah. I know it happens. Um, but I, I, I just, I really never want wanted to be in that position where I would stop a colleague and just go, oh shit, it's you. Sure. Oh uh, shit. But you know, as a police officer, or like as a former police officer, I would think. Geez, as a police officer, this is what we do. This is our bread and butter. You know, we stop drink drivers and we take them off the road, and you're doing it. I, I, I thankfully, like I said, I was never in that position. Yeah, for sure. Never in that position. Now this guy, like I said, it looks like a hard stop. Possibly a bit I didn't watch this. I didn't see this one. There to the front end where the barrier. So, th this is obviously a pit stop. Um, detectives are there, normal people are there, normal officers. Just watch how he smashes this window. <laughs> All right, we can see the guy scream. Oh. <laughs> Chuck, did they teach that in the police academy? <laughs> we we never got taught that. But if we did, I, I must have missed that day. <laughs> That's oh. hilarious. Uh, uh, and then this guy. So this troop, I, I think he's a trooper, judging by his hat. Yeah. And he's just going, get out of the car. Get out of the car. Seriously, get out of the car. No, I'm warning you, get out of the car. I'm going to break your car. Get out of the car. I'm warning you, you get out of the car. Possibly on that officer's dash cam. So the, the, the troopers obviously stopped him because he's running. Uh, uh, I know American cops are, yeah, can be a bit overzealous, but multiple. he's obviously mm -hmm. seen this guy run the stop sign. Mm -hmm. Um. And I think in America, there's a court in Providence. I don't know if you watch court in Providence as well. <laughs> they, they say, oh, yeah, I stopped. All they did is touch their brakes. They don't actually stop. Right, right. Um, and that's where the video stops. Uh, Chuck, have you ever, did you, as a, as a police, I didn't know you were a police officer, but did you ever have to break anyone's window? Um, not for soft tartary. Um, okay, okay. The, o the only the only window I had to smash was um, a report of someone attempting suicide. Mm. Uh, mm. They fed the hose pipe in, and they were um, they were trying to you know take their own life, and we got there, the car was in the garage, it was, oh God, I'll never forget the smell, um, you know, that sort of carbon monoxide -y, uh, smell, and uh, we, we tried the doors, obviously, it was all locked, so yeah, I, I had to wrap the pattern and, and smash the window and, and, and get the guy out. Um, to the best of my knowledge, he's still alive today. Awesome. Um, yeah, it was... Yeah, that was horrible. That was, um, but yeah, that's that's the only window I've put in. Well, that was one definitely worth, uh, you know, definitely worth oh, smashing. That was definitely worth the smash. That was definitely did, worth the fifty pounds to replace it. For sure, for sure. Did you ever um, confront? Did you ever run into sovereign citizens as an officer? No, I I, I left England. I left England in 2006. Uh, I was a police officer over there for 10 years. And uh, me and ex-Mrs. Chuck went to New Zealand. And, yeah, kind of lucky that we didn't fall into that, that realm at, at the time. Um, if I was a police officer now and I met one of these guys, I think I would say once, give me a license. And if they went, 
No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I'd just smash the window. Sure. <laughs> smash- sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's they uh, officers are trained on them now. Like I, I, I even talked to officers in my own neighborhood. They're like, Oh yeah, oh yeah, we watch the videos, we watch the videos. I told them I was like, watch my show. They're like, We watch the videos. So there's trainings on them. I I would um I've thought about it and the, the, there's a chap who I uh, I don't think is in the chat. In fact, I need to go a little bit back in the chat. Um uh Rocky. He's he's a police officer, or he's, he assists police officers. And I mentioned to him once. I said, "Do you know what I'm thinking of doing? I'm thinking of doing a tutorial." And he went, "Oh my God, you have got to do it. You have got to do it. You've got to put out how these people start, where they, what they say, and how to how to do the comeback." Um, Thompson versus Smith. Chicago versus Chicago um, coach company um, and all those. He says you just and, and throw in some throw in some all uh, other legislation that you know would fuck with their heads because they they go to USC. What is it? Ten twenty one and ten twenty two or something like that. Yeah, and you've got to do it and throw in some USCs and throw in some. Um, amendments and, and articles and he says because the guys would love it to rock up to a soft set and they start going <laughs> and, 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 and as an officer you just go well actually yeah blah, 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 and they go yeah Fuck. oh yeah i'll put the window down <laughs> There's so like some of the officers are pretty like are pretty dang good at it. Like not as far as like throwing the case law out there, but you know, they'll say, well, these are the laws of this state. Like they have some good comebacks. I love the ones some people, some of my fans have shown me videos where, um, where I got in a bunch of comments one time where they got, they're like, well, I have, I have the right to travel. I have the right to travel. And they say, well, um, yeah, me and Virgo are going to do a live stream, and I'll, I'll let you know, Chuck. I, we don't have a date yet. Maybe this week, maybe in the next couple of weeks. Um, um, I'm sorry about this. This was about eight minutes ago, so I'm sorry, Virgo. If you watch this on the playback, <laughs> good night. <laughs> good night, Virgo. Oh, that was eight minutes. I did see her drop that. Good, yeah, I did see her say she was leaving. I was catching some of it. But – um, I was talking to they say oh you have the right to travel what well, what is that d on your uh, on your gear shifter <laughs> and like there's 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 a couple of really good comebacks that just leave the soft sets speechless and like me maybe you and i should just put together like a nice list you know <laughs> good list, a, a big sort of handout so when you go to the academy um, right. Here, here's your hat. Here's your here's your baton. Here's your here's your gun. Oh, and by the way, here's here's the yes. sub. Here's yes. the sub. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh Wait, um, are you from England originally, Chuck? Yes, yes. I, I was born in um, I was born in Birmingham. Okay. Okay. So, awesome. Awesome. Birmingham, Birmingham is my um, my football team. When we eventually get back to football, um, I served in the West Midlands Police. Awesome! And I don't, people see this, but they actually haven't seen this. Um, so this is me. Ooh, let me just turn that off there. So that's do a bit, bit of angle. Oh, got you in the reflection there, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so this 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 was me um, awesome. twenty two years ago uh, as a very young officer. Uh, that was on graduation day. So yeah, and um, there's there's another picture of me on one of my videos in my New Zealand uniform. But um, yeah, so I, I was born in Birmingham, mm. in England, and. Um, I met uh, I met the ex, ex- Mrs. Chuck in um, 2003. Uh, we got married in 2004. 
And we emigrated to New Zealand in 2006. Okay. And I joined the New Zealand police there and did about three, three and a bit years there. So yeah, that, that, was, that was good fun, that was good times, good times. But I, I, I just had enough. Um, the shift work, it was taking an impact and I just went, so I, I went into um, uh, security there as a loss prevention manager for a department store. Mm -hmm. And isn't Birmingham, um, is it like it was an, an, an industrial city, right? Oh, many, many moons ago, yeah. Yeah. Um, it was, uh, it was, it's the home of um, car manufacturing. Um, oh God, many other stuff. In fact, the so the West Midlands sort of looks like looks like that. Mm. And this portion over here, which consists of um, towns such as Wolverhampton, Warsaw, West Bromwich, Wensbury, Dudley, um, 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 they were all classed as the black country. Now, the reason they were called the black country is because the amount of industry from Birmingham, the the soot from from the industry and the chimneys went over to the west, settled on the roof. Gotcha. And it was called the black country. Gotcha. So technically, I am from the black country. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Where we where they speak very, very strange. Um, yeah. <laughs> the reason the reason I knew that I actually um, I was traveling overseas and I met a, a British couple <clears throat> and uh, he was from they were I, I believe they were both from Birmingham. I, I, I know the husband was definitely from Birmingham and uh, we got to talking about it and he told me it was a big industrial city and uh, Pittsburgh is actually a big former in, former industrial city in the U.S. And it was, you know, at the, the turn of the century, um, very, very similar, Chuck, the, the roofs in Pittsburgh. So Pittsburgh was known for its steel mills. You know, our, fo our National Football League team is the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, we were the steel capital of the United States. And the south side, certain areas of the city were notorious for the dust, the soot from the steel mills and it, it was it's you know that's the story every day you'd have to go out and uh and brush the suit off of uh your front doorstep um gotcha. so that's why i knew birmingham when me and him had talked about it he had mentioned birmingham was a big industrial city same with pittsburgh i mean it's mostly in the past now there's like one one or two steel manufacturing plants in in the area but you know andrew carnegie and all that the turn of the century so kind of similar cities sorry i lost you for a split second oh uh, it might be me I'm still here. It's getting a little blurry. I'm losing you too, Chuck, in and out. Right. Are we, yeah, we're good. Okay. Let's play the fifth, Chuck. But I haven't, <laughs> but I haven't been arrested. You can, only plead, you can only plead the fifth when you get arrested. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Five is not dangerous. Of course it's not. I'll, I am going to do a video on 5G. You might think with the 5G is all these people burning down towers and protesting. What? And they're 4G. <laughs> or 3G. Or 2G. <laughs> the wrong towers, right? right. They're all going to be using the 5G. I just can't wait for till someone's like, you know, live streaming on YouTube using 5G while talking shit yeah. on 5G. 5G killing us. Right, right. How, <laughs> how, how are you transmitting this? Right. You tell every, oh, I'd burn it down. <laughs> oh, where did my stream go? Right, right, oh. absolutely. Oh, 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 oh shit. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Get over it. Get over but, it. Um, listen, Chuck, I, I got to get up a little early tomorrow. We've gone, um, we've gone about an hour and a half. So we have. I, I, yeah, I think I'm going to check out here in a minute. Okay. Well, in that case, I will say, Joe Cometo from the Common Sense Academy, thank you so much for joining us. Um, one thing we did miss here, let me just scroll back. Boom, 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 boom. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, shame you can't actually scroll back in comments. I'll find it in two seconds. Oh, no, it's gone. Oh, shit, I can't. Oh, well, that's weird. I can't scroll back further than 15 minutes in comments. Oh, maybe it's in here. Was it a uh, question or? It was, no, it was something very, very important. Something very, very important. Uh, dee, dee, dee. There are some great comments in here. <laughs> there are some great comments. Well, maybe uh, maybe our next one we can just take questions, you know, because we didn't we didn't do that much on the live stream. Um, oh, here we go. Oh, hang on. No, missed it. Is after that. Uh, somebody did put up a comment, and I saw it, and I posted it, but he had to take it off. It said. Did I miss the sip? Um, oh, do, do you want to do another one? I got to get another drink. Hold on. I think, we'll I think we, we, go. Yeah, we, need, we need to do another sip. All right. So, I don't know where that comment went. Where did that kind go? <clears throat> oh, look what I missed as well. Oh, brother. I, I finished my root beer and it's too late for coffee. I... Because we were talking so much, I, I've missed quite a bit. Mrs. Jarhead put up, and I can't scroll back to it, Mrs. Jarhead. I am so sorry. Mrs. Jarhead put up a $5 super chat. Um, Bullet put up a $5 super chat. Um, John Doe put up another $5 and five cents super chat. Um, I know, I know. This is, and I, I don't understand why even. YouTube, I can't scroll back on comments. Uh, but someone said, did I miss the sip? Can we do it again? So, it's, it's you, your You want to do this one, Chuck? It's your spiel. No, no, it's your spiel. <laughs> okay, well, normally I prefer coffee. It's 10 o'clock at night. I do got to get up a little bit early tomorrow. Chuck's got the coffee for you. I got the Diet Coke. You guys know I drink coffee, Diet Coke. I do drink water, and on occasion, I drink alcohol. But uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, it's an honor for me to be on Chuck's show. Uh, maybe in the future, I'll have him on my show. We'll take just straight comments from everybody. Uh, I am going to post this. I'm going to I'm gonna uh, copy this, though, and put it on my channel, Chuck, and then, you know, Hopefully we can both benefit a little bit. But uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, it does taste better when we sip together. Cheers. Uh, you got one more question in there, Chuck. Why do the English drink warm beer? I'm going to stick around for that one. Oh, God. <laughs> I never heard that before. I didn't know that.
All right. So in England, we have, um, there are three different types of beer. There's lager, um, obviously cold and um, runs through uh, compressed gas to produce the bubbles. There's a thing called bitter and something called mild. Um, bitter and mild are served room temperature or cellar, because obviously the, the barrels get into the cellar and it gets a bit cold in there. So it's not as cold as lager, mm. uh, but bitter and mild. Mild is a very, very dark it's a very dark and um, sort of bitter tasting alcohol. Um, bitter is in the middle between lager, light, mild, dark. It, it's oh, and personally, I have I've, I have had a couple of bitters, um, but it's really it, it's it's definitely an acquired taste. I don't know, and thank you for the question. And yeah, you got stouts, yes. <laughs> you have got your Guinness and your Kilkenny's and, and whatever. But um, the thought of drinking warm beer it just really never appealed. <laughs> I did not know that that was a thing in England at all. I mean, you won't yeah. often find it. I've never seen it here in the U.S. Yeah, I. I Stats are from Scotland and Ireland. Yes, they are. Um, yeah, uh, bitter and, and mild. Um, definitely an acquired taste. Um, we used to say that um, when you see a gentleman with a, a big bright red nose and, and bright red cheeks, we always used to say, well, he's a mild drinker. <laughs> It's just the way the alcohol reacts with the body. And if they've been doing it for years and years and years, you know, 20, 30, 40 years, uh, and they get this big bright red nose, you'd know he's a mild drinker. That would be me. I get my face gets red when I drink. But, um, hang on, Vegemite is awesome. Discuss. Okay. Vegemite <laughs> is disgusting. Disgusting. End of discussion. I've heard of it, but I've never had it. I've never uh, had it. But um, I, I'm going to take off, Chuck. You can keep the stream going. You can keep it going. Thank you again for having me on. I really enjoyed this. It was a lot of fun, and we, we will do it again. It has been awesome. And I will um, – you do 8 o'clock on Wednesday. I get home at about 7.30. Thirty. I can take the dogs for a very quick walk. I, I, I will jump in and watch your stream, but um, you've now got StreamYard. You're you're all good with that. Yes. Thank you for setting me up with this because I've tried to do a couple of other. I'd done a couple other streams and it was a disaster. Or, or we just had audio. It wasn't a disaster. Thank you for setting me up with this. Absolutely. This is great, actually. Yeah, and and, and so you can see the screens across the bottom, so I can do. That, do that, mm. we can do that, oh. we can do that. Oh, wow. You're a we wizard with it, Chuck. And we can do that. So just play around with it. You can go uh, sort of into private mode and then just mm. play around with it and, and you'll, you'll work it out. So you can show your documents, you can show your films. Um, but yeah, yeah. Keep it going. <laughs> I got to go, guys. I, I actually, so we have, you know. Um, Virgo's back. Court, oh, Virgo's back. The court hearings are now, they're doing a lot of them over the phone. And I have one 9 a.m. sharp. I know it's only 10, but um, it's going to be it's going to be a long morning for me. It's a pretty uh, contentious case. So the earlier I get to bed, the better we will. The, we, there will be more, though. 
So thank you, everyone, for coming. Anybody who came over from my show, I know we have a lot of the same audience, but anybody who came over from my show, thanks for coming over to see Chuck. I hope you subscribe. Everyone, you see my, if you, if you just go in Common Sense Academy, you'll find me. Um, but again, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Chuck. I'm going to head out. Thank you, Joe. Take All right. care. You're welcome, sir. All right.